were founded right here in 1956 and uh, broke ground in construction in 1957. Uh, the very next year in 1958, the National Radio Quiet Zone was established. It's a federal law that pertains to a 13,000 square mile area. And um, it, it's the thing that has helped keep this a quiet site for radio astronomy over the years. 1959, our first radio telescope, the first major instrument on site was completed. That's the Howard Tatel 85-1 that we call it. And we were open for business at that point. It wasn't until 2000 when the Green Bank Telescope was completed. And it has been in service uh, since and is still the world's premier single dish telescope. The search actually started on our Howard Tatel telescope one year after it opened, and that was done in 1960 uh, by Dr. Frank Drake. It was called Project Ozma. So we have Serendip 6 currently on uh, the Green Bay Telescope. It's a commensal piggyback kind of search. And we also have followed up uh, some interesting Kepler objects. It's been really cool. Uh, but by far the coolest thing that's going on now, about 20% of our telescope's time is spent on Project Breakthrough Listen. And that is the most powerful search for extraterrestrial intelligence that has ever been done. Visitors are greeted to the Green Bank Science Center by the Grote Reber Telescope right here. This is the first modern radio telescope invented by Grote Reber and completed in 1937. Grote Reber himself actually came to this site and reconstructed the telescope for us at this site, of course, with a different base. When it sat in his backyard, he steered it using a Model T axle, but we do have a more familiar mount for the telescope now. I have here a model of a 1970 Checker cab, and we still drive and maintain them today. These cars are preferred because not only are they, di are they diesel, that means no spark plugs to have to worry about. They also don't have a lot of fancy onboard electronics, so they certainly don't have power windows and locks and air conditioning, and fuel injectors, um, or any other Bluetooth instruments that might cause extra interference for our instruments. So we do prefer to drive these kind of vehicles once we move past our gate down to the telescopes. Well, welcome to 1965. Uh, the 140 foot telescope was completed in 1965. It is the world's largest equatorial mount instrument. And that means that we do have a large polar axle it sticks up at about 40 degrees in relation to this observation deck and it points directly toward Polaris, our North Star. Once you lock on to a source in your sky, you just have to drive one axis at a time to actually track it. It is aluminum welding and in fact at the time was the world's largest aluminum welding job ever. You'll notice our circle windows and the large observation deck around. When this telescope was uh, being shopped around to be built, it, the winning design was from a company that used to build ships during World War II. And in fact, they were about the only folks with expertise in aluminum welding at this large scale at the time. Now in 1996, Project Phoenix came to this telescope for about two years. And so on site, uh, Dr. Peter Backus, Dr. Seth Shostak, and Dr. Jill Tarter came here and they had 50% of this telescope's time dedicated over a two-year period. And this was quite a sophisticated search. Uh, they used real-time follow-up. So when they found an interesting source with this telescope, they could call a secondary telescope to verify uh, anything that they would find and to check it out immediately instead of having to wait and later find it in the data and uh, reobserve at a later time. So over the course of working here, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is, are you looking for extraterrestrial intelligence? Are you looking for aliens? And you know, yes, no, kind of, sort of, maybe so, a little bit has been the answer um, up until this point. And last year when Breakthrough Listen was announced and we were finally able to say absolutely we are. In fact, this is the definitive search and I feel like we're gonna be able to answer part of the question and that is if they are out there, can we find them? And I think this project is gonna help us answer that. So when visitors walk in and they have a question about one of the most fundamental questions of mankind, are we alone? 
Um, it pertains to our significance in the universe. They want to know about it. Can we help answer that question? Uh, I'm so happy to be able to communicate that, you know what, we are trying to find that answer and we now have the search and tool to do so.